This video is sponsored by Delta Power Equipment Corporation. Today, we're building this DIY farmhouse style coffee table. I made this entire table out of one by sixes. Nothing else. I've ripped down the one by sixes for the legs, for the X braces, for the rails, the top and the shelf, all out of one by sixes. So that's the only material lumber wise you're gonna need for this project. Seven 10 foot one by sixes, that's it. And the seventh one's just for spare parts mostly. How you doing? I'm Matt with 731woodworks.com. Today, we're building that table. Super simple, simple joinery with pocket hole construction, gluing and screwing, and we're gonna make that. It's gonna be awesome. Full disclosure, that's not the finished product. The finished product will be stained to dark walnut, but for the video, I wanted to get the natural wood look of that table before I stained it. If you're interested in plans for this build, there'll be in a link in the description below. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and click the subscribe button now so you don't miss any new content. Click the bell icon beside it and click all so you get notified of all the new content we've got coming. Also, don't forget to like and share this on your social media. I would appreciate it. So if you have video ideas or just to give a feedback on this build, let me know in the comments below. I take the best ideas and make videos out of those. So I'm also making an end table that's gonna match this design. Check that video out. This is a super simple build using pocket hole joiner and square cut. Most anybody can build this. Don't let the look of it intimidate you. Just because it's a bigger project, you can do it. I believe in you. Don't forget to check the description below for the tools and supplies used. Without further delay, Let's build this. We're finna start this coffee table project. I actually got two projects to build. He sent me a picture. He wants a coffee table that looks similar to that. He also wants an end table that looks similar to that. Stained in dark walnut. This first project will be the coffee table. And then the next video will be this end table. He wants it four foot long. 20 inches tall, 30 inches wide. First thing I wanna do is cut my legs out. I'm gonna cut those. If we're doing a one by top and he wants it 20 inches tall, then we're gonna cut the legs 19 and a quarter inches tall. So I gotta figure out how wide I'm actually gonna make those legs first and then we'll start cutting them out. Kind of trial and error going on here. So just a common one by six. Very first thing I like to do when I'm starting any uh, new cuts is go ahead and square the end up. So I just cut the very end of this board off. So I know that the legs are gonna be 20 inches long or tall. I can get two legs out of one cut or one one by six cut. So if it's gonna be 20, we know we're gonna go uh, 19 and a quarter. I'm gonna cut them just a little long, a 16th long, and then that'll give me a little bit to play with. I'm gonna cut the wrong side of the line. Watch out there. So that's four legs. So to make the legs, I'm gonna rip two and a half inch legs, two and a half inches wide. So I'm gonna rip the edge of the board off first using my jointing with the table saw method. That gives this side one good straight edge. We'll flip that over, move the fence into two and a half inches and rip two pieces off. And that'll give us equal two and a half inch equal legs. Gonna need four of them. I've got two boards, we're gonna do it. So if you, the reason I chose one by sixes for this project is when you rip down these legs, these two and a half inch wide legs, you can get two pieces out of one piece of a one by six, and then that'll leave you with just a tiny strip that you can just throw away or burn or make toothpicks or whatever you wanna do with scrap. I'm using the Delta 262251 12 inch sliding compound miter saw for this project. It's a mouthful. Slide on this thing is so butter smooth. If you haven't seen the unboxing video of that, go check it out. Uh, it features a sliding all the way out Good cross cut capacity there. It slides so smooth. I, I can't explain to you how smooth this thing is. You can lock it in place for shorter or more narrow boards like I've got here. It features the shadow line cut. So it puts a shadow on your work, on your stock when you come down and it is really accurate. You can see exactly where your blade is gonna be. Notice that the teeth are wider than the actual blade thickness so that you can see where the, the teeth are. Very accurate. I really like that feature. My DeWalt did not have that feature. That can be turned off if you don't like it. It also can be turned on by this toggle switch up here off and on switch. For you bevelers out there, you can flip this little piece up right here. There's a switch in the back on either side. You flip up, it takes that positive stop off, and then you can bevel up to 47 degrees both ways. It has positive stops along the way. You can also cut miters up to 60 degrees this way, 50 degrees this way to the left, 60 to the right. It's just a, it's a really, really nice saw. So I'm very pleased with how this saw has performed so far. And if you want to check it out for yourself, click the links in the description below to Home Depot or Amazon, whichever one. Sometimes one has better pricing than the other. So check them both out. If you want to see a full review of this saw, there's one coming in a few weeks. So I'm gonna lay this out and decide how long I need everything. So based on the picture, there's very little overhang all the way around, less than the inch. I, it, it almost looks maybe a half inch overhang and I'm gonna try to stick with the picture as best I can. 
We know that the top's gonna overhang a half inch. We'll take off an inch from the total length of this. We know we want it 48 inches. So if you lay a 48 inch piece out on your table, minus a half inch on each end, so I'll put it at a half inch here. <coughs> seven and a half here. Then all you gotta do is just move your tape measure to the inside of that to know that you're gonna need a 45 and a half inch. You're gonna need two 45 and a half inch pieces. And we're gonna stick with this two and a half inch wide for your rail, just like that. I think that'll look nice. When you go to assemble this, you need a good flat surface to do it or it's gonna get all wampa jawed on you. You don't want that. Uh, wampa jawed means it's gonna rock. You don't want that. So if you don't have a flat surface in your shop or your garage, what I used to do before I had this workbench because my garage floor is awful, I took it inside and laid it the flattest part of the floor I could find. You've got some vinyl flooring or hardwood or laminate like we've got. I found a good flat area and that's where I used to put stuff together. And so you use what you got. Side rails, you'll need four at 45 and a half inches long because you need two for the top, two for the bottom. Same thing on the ends, and I'm fixing to figure out what the ends are gonna be now. So we know that the ends will be facing this way. We know that the customer wants a 30 inch top. We know we want a half inch overhang. So again, we're gonna set this at a half inch. We'll set this at 29 and a half, right? So that gives us a 30 inch top, the half inch overhang on each side. Move the tape measure in and just measure the inside, or 23 and three quarters of an inch. So we're gonna need four at 23 and three quarters. When I'm building new projects, I like to write down everything that's gonna uh, be going on. One thing is I'm gonna have some plans available uh, for you to go download for this project. Second is if I get another order for a table like this, I'll have a guide and I won't have to do all this again. It takes long, then I'll just have a cut list. So I'm gonna cut out the side rails and the end rails and then we're gonna rip them down the exact same way to two and a half inches and that will give us the basic frame of our coffee table. Pocket hole time. So there's a number of ways you can join this together. And I'm using pocket holes for simplicity, speed, because I want to. Pocket holes get a bad rap in woodworking, especially if you're a more intermediate or advanced woodworker. They're like frowning on these things unless you're building like cabinet bases. I like them because for beginners, uh, for beginner woodworking projects like this, it's extremely accessible, it's easy, and they work good. Probably not the greatest, but they work good. So that's what I'm using. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can also use dowels. If you want to do that to join these together, you can use mortise and tenon. Uh, there's a number of different ways you can join this together. I personally, I like pocket holes. If you've seen this channel from here back, you know every project that's made on here, almost all pocket holes. So for the side rails and the end rails, which is what this piece is, for drilling pocket holes, we're gonna use an inch and a quarter pocket hole screw. So we're gonna drill a three quarter inch pocket hole. There's a, when you buy this, it comes with a guide, I think. If not, it's on the Craig website. What size hole you need for the screw size, material size. So I'm just gonna center it up and I'm gonna drill two pocket holes on each end on which piece I think is gonna be the inside. Whatever looks best on the outside, I'll drill on the opposite side. I'm gonna center these up, start knocking out pocket holes. I got a few. Craig Bit comes with this K5. I highly recommend the K5 over the K4. K4 has the clamp in the back. You have to reach around, K5's in the front. K5 has these extension wings. I just put this on a piece of board. It comes with everything you need to make pocket holes. Link in the description below to this K5. I highly recommend it. So I'm drilling pocket holes. Those look a little too far outside. So on this side, I think I'm just gonna go with these two closer ones. And just center it up on there. I think that'll be better. I like that better. I'm gonna go with that method versus the wider method. So I actually think the best idea, sometimes I'm wrong, but I think the best idea would be to make the ends first because these two pieces will be flat together versus this 90 degree angle coming in here. So that's what I'm going to attempt. Wood glue, pocket hole screws, and a Craig face clamp, one of a kind glue spreader. If you have one of those, a Craig face clamp is extremely useful here. If you don't have one or any face clamp like this, I highly recommend getting one. The main thing you're gonna be worried about is right there, you want that bottom edge to be flush, or the top edge, once it's flipped over to be flush. The face clamp should hold everything nice flush on the sides. Once everything is in line, you can just roll it over and put two screws in. You don't wanna overdrive these in these one buys. You wind up messing up and breaking one. I got the impact, or if your drill, set it on the lowest setting. So everything's snugged up, that's good, you can let it go. Same thing on these legs, you're gonna make sure you're putting the best foot forward kind of thing, even though you will be able to see some of the outside or the inside of it. So that's one end. Do the other end exactly the same way. So 
now it's time to put the side rails on. So these are just some Pittsburgh clamps. Uh, I got them at Harbor Freight. They're very inexpensive. They're five foot clamps. That's gonna help you a whole lot right here. If you don't have them, you can hold everything in place while you screw everything down, but they would be helpful. The best thing to do is go ahead and put glue on both ends of this board of your long rail. Put the other rail over on the other side just for a spacer. It doesn't have any glue or anything like that on it. And then I'm going to line everything up and try to get this thing pretty close. The good thing about when you use these type clamps, they're not the greatest clamps in the world, but they'll hold everything in place while you get some screws in there. You want to make sure that's flush again, like on the sides. Certainly want to be careful driving these screws through this way, or you'll actually break through here if you overdrive them. To make life easier, I'm just going to spin this thing around and we'll put the other side on. So I'm not real sure why it's this way, but you see these pieces are offset. The bottom is maybe two inches off the floor, where this one is maybe two and a half, three, three and a half inches off the floor. So to the top of that one. The bottom of this one goes to the top of that one. So I guess that's what we're going to do. Good tool to use to mark two inches is this combination square. Just move it down to two inches and tighten it up. I'll take and make a mark. So I'll glue, clamp, screw this in place. Two inches from the bottom. I will check that with my tape measure to make sure it's actually two inches. And then we'll put the, we'll put the side rail in. It's going to be a little taller or a little further up. So this is the basic frame. It's a really lightweight. I mean, it should be very lightweight right now. We're gonna go ahead and add some bracing in here because it's gonna need it with the type of wood we're using and uh, how lightweight everything is and ties everything together, makes everything more stable. We're gonna put the X pieces in also, but first I wanna put in at least two braces. One up, two up here, two down here. They should be the exact same length. You don't wanna take the measurement out here in case the boards are warped or there's a bow in them. You wanna take them at the ends where everything is. So we're looking at 27 and 3 eighths of an inch tight. That's gonna be a tight fit, 27 and 3 eighths. Wanna go down here and make sure they're the same or very, very close. That's 27 and 3 eighths. So I know that I'm going to need four pieces, 27 and 3 8 inch long. So I'm going to cut two one by sixes, 27 and 3 8 We'll rip them down into two inch strips instead of two and a half. Also note that on the picture, this end board is up higher than the side board. So I want to keep that look for the customer because this is what they want. So this from the bottom up on the side rails is two inches. From the bottom up on the ends is three and a quarter inch to the bottom of this end rail to the bottom of the foot. So I'm gonna cut, we'll cut out these pieces and we'll start installing 27 and 3 eighths. Seems like there's something missing on this saw. Yep, that's definitely it. That should come from the factory like that, don't you think? On a build like this, it's imperative you have good square cuts. That's gonna make everything fit together nicely. All those joints are gonna look nice and tight. Everything's gonna look really nice. So that's where a good saw comes in. This Delta is really good at that. Out of the box, everything was nice and square. So I got my cross braces cut out. I took the total length of this measurement here on the inside, which is like 45 and a half, remember? And then I divided that by three, and that gives me three equal sections. One, two, three. Putting two cross braces in. I'm gonna have one here, one here, and now you see the three. One section here, one section here, one section here. So that gives you three sections. If you was only putting one cross brace in, of course you could just divide by two, and then you would just put it in the middle. If we're going two braces, we're gonna divide by three. We was going with four braces. So I'm just gonna glue and screw. I went ahead and cut these the same width just to make everything easier. I'm gonna get everything in there lined up. I made mark at 15 and three, or 15 and three sixteenths of an inch is what the marks was from each end. That puts them equal. And then that gives us an equal space here. Because these are three quarters of an inch thick, I just marked a line on the top in the center. And I'm gonna line that up with the mark on top at 15 and 3 16 Still gives everything equal spacing. Doesn't really matter if it's perfectly equal because it's gonna be underneath and you're just gonna be attaching the tabletop to these and the shelf on the bottom to them. And it's just for bracing. Not making a clock, so if it's not perfect, don't worry about it. Clamps are gonna be your best friend. Even if you have to buy cheap ones like this, this is a Harbor Freight. I don't remember what they cost. They're very cheap, but they hold everything in place while you get everything screwed down. Glue and screw. What I like to do is just kind of get it close and then you just start snugging this clamp up. And the clamp is only so that you can hold everything in place until you get it screwed in. The only thing that's really imperative here is the top is flush. You want your tabletop to sit flush. You don't want it to have a, a bump there. I'm gonna put, I've got this snugged up. I'm gonna put the top screw in, make sure everything's square and then put the bottom.
we got our basic frame. I'm gonna do the X feature next. Probably gonna go ahead and just sand everything right now to 120. Then do the X's because once you get the X brace in here, it's very difficult to get this inside frame sanded. One thing you may want to, you may not want to, depending on what you wanna know. If you wanna check the square of something, rectangle or like this, if you wanna check, make sure everything's even. If you got a tape measure, you, if you can get it to hold on the corner, or if you get somebody to hold it for you, measure across diagonally, this is 55 and 1 8 inch across. And then you can do the same thing, the other diagonal, 55 and one eighth of an inch. So I know that it's square. If it's off or racked in any way, then it's out of square. You're gonna to try to fix that from here. It's gonna be difficult and what's likely has happened is some of these cuts that you've made were unsquare or off. So that's why it's very important if you can get a miter saw or if you can make good square cuts with your circular saw, that's gonna be very important for something like this so it's not out of whack. Now, if it is out a little bit, you know, a 16th or an eighth, nobody's gonna know but you just put the top on and it's probably not gonna hurt anything. If for some reason this thing is wobbly, this one isn't good, because. I have had them come out a little wobbly. If for some reason it's rocking on two legs, when you get something that spans this distance, it shouldn't rock because it should have enough give in it at this point to hold it down. But if it is, you'll have two legs that are touching and two legs that come up off the thing. So you're gonna pick one of the legs that are touching, start trimming it off either with a saw, more probably the best way to do it is take a sander, sand a little bit and then try it, sand a little bit and try it until it, all four legs set flat. Sand, then we'll do the X brace. Very simple to do these X braces. If you've watched this channel anytime at all, you know how I do them, gonna do them the same way. So I got that thing sanded. If you can find somebody else to sand for you, I recommend do that, because I don't like it. Time to put these X braces in. This is an inch and a half strip of a one by six. So I just cut these an inch and a half because in the picture, they weren't as wide as these pieces. So I just cut them an inch. So I'm gonna make that the angle goes to the bob. Don't know what I'm doing. What's the picture look like? As you can see, the X's are more narrow. They go to the sides instead of to the bottom, attached to the side, that's what I'm gonna do. It'll also make for a less uh, steep angle. So a little quick clamps like these really help. All you gotta do is eyeball it to the corner, clamp it, both corners line up. You take your pencil, just draw a line at the edge of the board. That'll give you your length and your angles. I've got the length to on both ends. I've got the angle I need to cut. I just take it over to the miter saw, change the angle, make the cut. Now I like to cut them a little long and then slowly ease back up to that angle. This thing is so easy to change angles on. You simply just unlock this this is, it screws to the right and locks it in. So even if you push that, you can't move it. Screws to the left, unlocks, push that button and move to the angle desired. I'm gonna eyeball this angle. It's got a positive stop here at 22 and a half. I'm gonna make this cut because it looks close, but it, I may have to adjust it. One very important thing is to check those fences because they're not gonna get hit by the blade. So that's pretty close to that angle right there. We'll sneak up on it a little more. Now that I cut that line, it looks like it's gonna be just a little close. So I'm gonna move it down to 22 degrees. We'll move this other end down here and we'll cut it long. And we're gonna sneak up on it. Still feel like 22 degrees is not too much. I'm gonna bring it back to 21. So that's what you should look like. This is a 21 degree angle, so that's gonna be our angle there. It was like 21 and a half, and you see there's a tiny bit of gap in there. Like very, 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 very tiny. Once we stain that and I get this flushed up, you probably won't even see that. So 21 degree angle is what we're looking for. Now we have to cut this piece. So I still went with the 21 degree angle here. And then this is actually a 47 degree angle is what this winds up being. If you make a table this size with an opening this size and just, I just cut them to length. I marked them, snuck up on the cut and everything looks like it's gonna fit together. I'm just gonna glue these in. These are not structural, they're for looks. A wood glue should hold them just perfectly fine. That's what we're gonna do. You may wanna sand all this first to get off any rough edges. So just gonna flush that up, make sure the sides are flush. Uh, sometimes these boards can be a tiny bit thicker than what you've used if you've got a new board. So if it is, you're gonna sand that flush whenever you sand the rest of it. Main thing is we're just gluing everything, make sure everything looks nice. And then we'll put this top piece in because it's gravity is gonna hold it in there. And then we can put a little pressure here and clamp to the top, let that glue set, and then we can remove the clamp. And I'm just using a little bit of wood glue on the ends. I kind of feel like it's gonna need a little something. Stand by. I'm gonna put just a brad nail right here. 
Oh, too much biscuit there. Golly. Don't do that. Bad idea. I know what I did though. I'll take and uh, tamp this down with a hammer. Try to get that brad nail on in there and we'll let the glue dry. So I thought that glue would hold those in and I was wrong. What I did was I just took some brad nails, small 5 8 inch brad nail on the top and then one on the side, also one underneath. And then on the ends, I drove two 5 8 inch brad nails on each one of those. See, I will sand that smooth. If I was painting that, I would fill those with that CA glue, sand it smooth, but since it's being stained, Probably just gonna sand over it, and then when I stain it, it'll just be a dark spot there. It won't look bad. It'll look kind of like a knot hole, kind of. Now it's time to build the top and the shelf. I'm going to try to make those out of a one by six, cut them, joint the edges. I have a table saw method you can join with. I got a new gift, the Wu Honda jointer. I'm gonna use that to joint one edge. And then I'll use the table saw to cut each piece to size. It has to be 30 inches wide. So I'm going to figure out how many one by six will take to go to 30. I know five times six is 30. So I may just cut them down to five inches. I think that's what we'll do. And they'll be 48 inches long for the top. Now I'm gonna cut the top boards out. I know I'm going to need six boards, 48 inches long. I'm gonna cut them 49 inches because once I get everything put together, laid on top, I'm gonna take my circular saw and cut a straight line across each end. That way each end is good and straight. Now, if you don't want to use one by sixes, you can use a tens, one by four, whatever you want to use for the top. You can use a sheet of plywood. You can take a sheet of plywood and cut to fit this bottom and make it that, and then put some edge banding on there or cut some one eighth inch strips and put on the edge of that. That'll work perfectly fine. Just remember if you use plywood and this one by six spruce, it's going to be stained. So it'll come out a different color. Plywood and different woods will, will stain a different color. They won't look just the same. However, if you were painting that frame like a biscuit white or distress it like we do on this channel and you stained the top and the shelf, that would look good. Test, test. All right, so I went ahead and jointed the edges of these and then I cut everything down to size. Each of these are five inches, so this is a 30 inch wide top. If you wanna see a complete breakdown on how I build these tabletops, I have a video just about building tabletops just like this out of one buys. I'll drop a link in the description below. You can go check that out. If you want it broken down step by step. Basically, I jointed the edge using my jointer, but you can use the table saw just like I did in the video guide. And then I cut them to size at five inches. Now I'm going to pocket hole screw all of these and I'm gonna put four in each board and I just measured four inches off at each end and then equally spaced them in the middle. And so you should have four per, per board and then I'll pocket hole everything together and glue and pocket hole. And then this tabletop, I'll cut the ends off to make it actually four foot and now all the ends are straight. May do a little round over, I haven't decided yet, or I may just sand it smooth. It just depends. I think I'm gonna sand it smooth because of the look of this table. Pocket hole. <laughs> That top made, got it sanded, it's sitting on there really flat. The only problem is that 1 16th of an inch wobble that we saw earlier, this corner over here. But the tabletop fasteners will take care of that. I'm not even at all concerned about that. You shouldn't be either if yours is off just a little. Gonna make that, so it's like 4, 4.15 my time, Central Standard Time, South Arkansas time. I gotta cook supper. But tomorrow I'm gonna do the bottom shelf and get this ready to stain. That's all we like is doing the bottom shelf. We're going to sand everything one final time for 120 grit and make sure we didn't miss any glue anywhere because that'll mess up your stain. It'll put like a light color. You don't wanna do that. So I got a new wireless mic a few weeks ago. You may have noticed the audio is better. The problem is it's wireless, so it goes dead. It's got a battery. Yesterday, 
he went dead and I didn't know it. So I'm just looks like this yesterday. I'm like, no audio. If I missed anything, I know that this edge here is a little bit popped up. Not concerned about it. Those tabletop fasteners will fix that. And so today, today's a new day for me. This, I will cut the slot for the tabletop fasteners. If you've never seen me do that, stick around. Also, I'm gonna build the bottom shelf. The bottom shelf will be exactly like the top shelf. It'll just be shorter. I think it's 45 and a half, 45 and three quarters. What was it? Hold it right there. So it's 45 and a half inches long instead of 48. The top is 48. The bottom shelf will be 45 and a half by 30. It's gonna be the same width. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Should I show that? Maybe time lapse a little bit. It's gonna be the same thing. The only concern I have is getting that cut exactly straight. Cause, because right there, it's if it's not straight, you're gonna be able to see it. So I've got to, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be exact but I'm gonna try to get it very close. That, that is a tabletop fastener, kind of, a, or they, some people call them Z-clips. This is a Rockler tabletop fastener. I'll drop a link in the description below if you wanna pick some up. The way I cut the slots for them, so the way they work is if the tabletop is gonna go on top of this, tabletop fastener will slip into that slot and then you will screw into the tabletop from underneath. That allows for wood movement to left and right for expansion and contraction as well as in and out. So there's a couple of ways to cut these slots. If you have a biscuit jointer, that works fine. If you have a router with an edge guide, that works too. It's what I've got. This router came with this edge guide. It's a rigid palm router. And the way I set the depth is I just set this on there, set it to right at the edge. That's an eighth inch straight bit. So that's an eighth inch straight bit. Straight, that's an eighth inch straight bit. And I just set the clip on there and then adjust the guide until it just touches. As far as depth goes, I set it till it's about halfway of that clip. And the reason I did that is because I'm using one by material. If I was using two by, I would go full depth on it. But because I'm using one by, I don't want to cut too deep into my one by material. I'm gonna cut slots for all of those clips into this right now. So how many do we cut? That's totally up to you. I'm gonna put one at each of these in the middle. So that's six, we know. One here, one here, that's eight. And probably one on each end, so that's 10. Put 10 on each, 10 here. Down here though, because of the way this is raised higher, it's not gonna be the same. So I know that I'm gonna put uh, one in each one of these and then probably the same six without the ones in the middle. So I got my Swanson straight edge again. Same thing I did on that other top. I'm gonna to square this up. You want a good framing square or some type of bigger square. Uh, it's imperative that both of these be as square as possible when we're putting it inside a frame like that. The bigger the square, the better off you will be because you got more surface area to square everything up. All right, everything, I measured the other end down and made a mark at 45 and a half. The frame is just barely over 45 and a half. It may give us a little play. She fits. It's just a little snug on that one corner over there. I mean, barely. I can I can push on it and get it on down there, no problem. By the time everything's sanded, I think it's gonna fit perfect. Now I gotta sand it. And once this is sanded, staining time is all it's got left. So we're going to install those tabletop fasteners. They install with just one screw. I'm gonna pre-drill a hole so we're sure that it doesn't 
split the wood at this process, that would not be good. So we're gonna pre-drill a tiny hole, make sure you don't drill all the way through, and then we'll just install these, they're really easy to install. So I went ahead and made sure my table squared up. Uh, I got equal distance all the way, or my tabletop is squared up to the frame. Uh, these tabletop fasteners come with the hardware you need. Just slide them in the hole, and that, I mean, really, they're so simple. You're gonna pre-drill a little hole. And I just ease them down on there. There's no reason to uh, drive them, over drive them in there. They're just to hold the tabletop in place. Uh, they do need to be snug or tight. They just don't need to be, you know, you just don't need to over drive them and wind up stripping your wood out. And the bottom shelf gets installed the exact same way. So now I'm gonna put this bottom shelf in and my concern or what I'm gonna be watching for is to make sure I don't scratch or scuff this up when I put it in. It's easier said than done. It is a very snug fit, so I wanna angle it in there. If I had an extra set of hands, that would be optimal. But since I don't, I don't. Kinda get it close, and it should be snug enough that I'm gonna have to put a little pressure over here. Not much. That looks good, don't it? Woo! You know, that this right here is why we build stuff. It's the satisfaction of when it comes, comes together and it looks nice and you like it. It feels good. It feels real good. And the second will be the nervousness right before the customer gets here when the customer picks this up. I'm nervous to see if, what the reaction is going to be. And if it's a good reaction, it makes it worth it. So now we just make sure we center this up so that we got equal overhang on each side. Should be a half inch, give or take just a little. If it's off a sixteenth, it's all right. You believe that? I'll put her in there straight. And I'll take uh, four of these clamps on each corner. Just hold this in place while I tilt it up or turn it over and attach the tabletop fasteners from underside. If you don't have any of these, they're like two, three dollars at Walmart. Very cheap, but very handy. So if you've been following this channel, you know I'm gonna point out my mistakes because we all make them and it's okay. It's okay if you make a mistake. The word, like I said in one of my previous videos, the worst thing can happen is you're gonna roast some marshmallows tonight when you burn this, right? I wouldn't roast marshmallows over stained wood. But anyway, so I noticed on one of these cross members, so this is the outside piece, right? And it sticks up further because it's three and a half inches up. It sticks up further because it's three and a half inches up. This is two inches up. I wasn't thinking about the pocket hole being exposed once my shelf was on there, right? So what I did was I used a three eighths inch dow uh, dowel glued it in there and cut it off smooth. And now you can barely see the top of that pocket hole uh, where actually the plug is. Most people will never see that, but now you know. Also, because uh, apparently this seam here wasn't perfectly square when I put it together. So maybe I, I messed up when I was jointing that edge somehow or another. It's gonna, it's got a little bit of a, just a little bit of a gap right there. And so it's kind of kicked up on this one corner. And yes, I can install a tabletop fastener under here somewhere and pull it down tight. But at the same time, if it's, it's gonna be rolled up and I pull it down with pressure, then that pressure at some point's gotta relieve. So I'm just probably gonna leave that because from back here, you can't see it. From angle, most people are gonna be looking at it, which is up higher. You're not gonna be able to see it. So I'm just, some of these angles aren't perfect. That's pretty good. This one's a lot better. See how tight that angle is. And this one's just a little off down here. But if I had been painting this, I would have filled that with CA glue, sanded it smooth. Wouldn't even see a seam there. But since I was staining it, I left it because I knew that dark stain would get down in there and color that a dark color, which is fine. If you enjoy this channel, there's a few ways you can show support. 
First is watching more videos. That helps the channel more than anything. If you want shirts, we have shirts available like this one. There should be cards below the video. You can go check out these shirts or a link in the description below, whichever you choose. If you like this video, click that box right there. It takes you to the next set of videos. If you click that box, you know you're getting that virtual fist pump. Clicking that box and watching the next set of videos helps this channel grow, and I sincerely appreciate that. If you hadn't subscribed, click that subscribe button. Share it on your social media. Hit that thumbs up. Let me know what you think about this table. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click that box. Go ahead and click that box.